Oh boy, it's a major hack. It's a major hack. It is a major hack. My like guys, it is. Uh, what is it? Five a.m. Right, about an hour ago. You guys can hear me. We had a service drop across the board in the United States. Many banks are down. Just about everything else is down. Let me put the system on back to speed. Don't you slow down. Board, let's see. Look at that one. Test one, two, okay, here we go. Let me keep this up and operational. Testing, one, two. It's good to go. Good morning, everybody out there, anybody out there. I want to see half you guys are out there. Guys, you might want to be aware that we we are just hit with a major, uh, a major hack, a major hack. If anybody's a night owl or an early riser like myself, you know that um, from air traffic control to banks, the systems are down. Let's see. Come on, DI. Get your act together. We have a... Uh, Severe cyber attack right now. Severe. And people are still uh, sleeping. Are you serious? Are you serious? This is a big one. This is a big one. A big one. Mm -hmm. A big one. You guys should check your uh, bank logins. See if you can log into your bank. I know um, people are stopped at the uh, air tra- or the uh, airport terminals. The systems are down. Bank systems are down. Certain communications, certain cell phone systems are down. Other things are starting to drop. Uh, municipalities are having sporadic interruptions. You guys know what this is, don't you? This is a this is, this is probing big time. This is probing, and I just finished discussing that these parties, these these um, external states, because they know Trump is going to be president, assigned president, they must act right away. And so this is, um, you know, this is not really a, it's not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. I mean, there are massive issues happening right now. Right, guys, let me see something. Let me mute you guys real quick. I'm going to make sure with uh, COT we're on a, we have our backups going. I just uh, took everything off the main system. Everything is off the system. So we can't be, uh, we won't endure any of what's happened. But guys, try not to panic too much. Um, but there is a major issue happening right now in America. I mean, a major issue. We are under a, uh, we're having a huge cyber attack right now. A huge cyber attack right now.
in fact, I'm going to be back in just a minute. We'll have a discussion on some things because uh, I'm with you. But I have to leave here in a few. Uh, yeah, I'm already being, being summoned, you could say. I'll be right back with everybody in just a few minutes. I am going to restart our main player here because I want to record something. So I'll be right back, everybody. And anybody, early risers, I'll be right back. I think you can. Uh Uh-oh. As suspected. Well, get ready for updates to your systems. Here they come. I think it's a uh, security breach. You guys forgive me. I just got back in in, and did my morning run thing. Let's see. Not yet. Let me not let this uh, shut down here. We don't want that to happen. All right, so just in case you guys don't know, there's been a global outage uh, of quite a few things, right? Airlines, banks. It seems like the entire uh, business support hub is out. You can verify that by attempting to look at your bank accounts. See if you can log into your any financial services. And again, let me mark this for the recording. This is July 19, 2024. 3, 19 a.m. And the globe has been hit with uh, something quite major. If I'm not mistaken, they should be covering this on this is immediate, this is worldwide, but things like this are going to happen. Something to be expected. Even more things, actually. And why? Because these other countries are somewhat intimidated by um, what's about to happen in the U.S. elections. That's my take on it anyway. Of course, naturally, they're going to have some sort of a cover for this. But it's the first of a few things that are going to have to be reset. I, I suspect, look for a some sort of a cyber lockdown here in the USA. It will not, somebody says, let's see, good, good. Somebody can log in in Illinois. Okay, good. UK is still working. Well, parts of it are. Um, they should be covering this because it, people are calling in from airports and they've been, uh, you know, stuck there for a while. Oh, that's not good. I'm looking at some of the uh, some of the feedback coming back, and folks are just air traffic is just uh, halted. I think you can track to be an aircraft on a flight 24, I believe. It's uh, say a website where you can track aircraft. I believe. So it's been some, it's going to, this is going to continue. It's going to continue, right? It's going to keep going like this. Um, These things will happen, right? One thing you can't do is panic. Um, If they do happen to get into our infrastructure financially, it, it affects everybody, right? So everybody will be at a somewhat of a service loss if that were to actually happen. But there's no need to really panic in this case. I hate it for those who are stuck at airports. But we are that governing country. uh, And and certain services have been breached um, last night. In fact, last night as the speech was happening, there were some uh, severe breaches in... in, in, um, as far as the corporate world is concerned. And that's, uh, well, that's just the way it is. Somebody says, I noticed having issues connected to VPNs. Yeah, I was able to work around it. Okay. Fox News, good. Fox News is reporting it. Good. 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 And guys, just in case you log back into your accounts, if you if you test your accounts again, can't get in. 
they probably will be applying patches, workarounds, you know, all these different things they have to really reconstruct this issue from the ground up. Air traffic control, if you're going to take a trip, you might expect some severe delays uh, with air traffic control. If you take notice, it, it looks like uh, air traffic is slowed down to a crawl, believe it or not. Uh, I see some circling flights. They're just going in a circle. Well, that can't be good. Anyway. Not good. Somebody said tonight we got free Taco Bell because the machines were down. Hmm. Well, guys, you know, these, as we as we continue to go forward, uh, you can expect these people, you know, these uh, folks who do whatever they do to become more active in the cyber world. Some people don't have the machinery or, or let's say, the um, inventory to attack the USA one way, and they'll try it a different way. They will attempt to affect everybody in uh, another way. So any banks who were connected to certain financial hubs, their systems are not going to, uh, it's just not going to work out for them. While we're at it, I'm checking, checking something here real quick. Hopefully they get everything working again. And when they do, I suspect that we'll have, you know, issues like this here and there. I would not be surprised if they locked down the infrastructure of the USA and began to cut out some international services until they can get a grip on what's actually happening. They will likely also take all these, all this traffic, internet traffic, and begin to reroute it. Um, If you notice, in the center of the USA is a massive uh, computer system computer network and this network is is uh full of ai but it's a very secure system i doubt if anybody can ever get a hold of that thing but it is uh it is quite efficient in tracking and doing what it does that's where everything will be redirected to so a system change through hacking this hacking issue people will begin to call upon the government or some corporation or something to begin to implement full biometric security parameters, which means get ready for uh, get ready for a person to intimately be tied into their device. People will call for this. Otherwise, you know, you face a lot of hackers and people who do bad things, right? Um, it, it's moving swiftly. Everything is going to move swiftly. I personally believe, because of the all these different uh, culmination of things that have been happening here lately, are pointing in one direction. It's almost like the entire world is being primed uh, to go into a brand new system. Some of what I touched base on last night. They want to take down the old one, implement the new one. And of course, to get everybody to switch to a newer system, you simply disprove the viability of the working system and that's something they're going to do that's something we'll see fairly quickly i wouldn't be surprised if in a two-month period if we start doing everything a very different way very secure way but it's of no surprise i think one one big thing is that if we're not careful people will disconnect the spiritual narrative of prophecy, revelation, uh, with reality. In other words, they'll lose their footing. People will lose their footing. Forget about the prophecies. Forget about some of the um, older conversations people used to have concerning uh, prophecies and people and groups coming forward in support of the kingdom of the beast. They'll forget about that. And they'll be the main ones that serve it. You know, I can really see that happening, how a blindness uh, can really come over the people. And as the world continues to struggle, it's this power struggle 
of, of good and evil, sometimes evil against evil. Um, and people have more and more complications concerning, you know, their general way of life. A different solution is going to have to be implemented. And because our computer systems now are so complicated, don't be surprised if full, a full biometric lockdown would happen in, in less than two months. And I mean full implementation of some of those uh, things we've been talking about concerning the, the concerning technology. Don't be surprised if, if things happen earlier than usual. Because I know that uh, they are, we, we have a, they're going to do a threat assessment today. Uh, that threat assessment should be finished probably around noon today. I'm curious to see what the, I know it's a heightened level, a heightened threat that the world is under right now, but you have bad actors who are communicating nonstop now, which means, you know, they're planning things. Again, be strong for those who don't know this. And you're going to have a lot of people who will make up a narrative or make up a reason for all these things happening. And, uh, you know, that's going to be, somebody says, do you mean neurally? Not, no, not necessarily. Let me share this with you. Those programs you know about, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like these, these, uh, some of these people that are behind the operations in many countries. A lot of people know about public rich people like Elon Musk and Bill Gates and all these guys, right? That's what the average person knows. Let me remind you that there are folks that are richer than they are. You don't know their names. And they will always call the shots. So it's not the ones that you know about. Um, Elon Musk, for example, uh, think of him being put in place as PR, right? To, to calm the nerves and to uh, keep everybody a bit uh, grounded concerning billionaires. But there are some billionaires other than Jeff Bezos and, and uh, all these Elon Musk and all these guys that you don't know about. And these folks you don't know about, they're, they're running Quite a bit. There are programs like that too. There are public programs that you've heard about, but there are other programs you don't hear about that are far advanced. For example, the robotics uh, that most people are introduced to publicly, like Boston Dynamics. A person would look at Boston Dynamic uh, um, robots, right? The, these uh, advanced robots, and they'll say, "Well, we, you know, we've come a long way, but we have a long way to go." Well, in truth. It's the robotic systems you don't see, the ones that are actually deployed. And when I say, I mean deployed, working with our troops. I'll put it this way. It is, a soldier could not tell the difference between one of these fielded systems and a regular soldier. How about that? That's how far we've come. Now, we're talking, in the last 15, 15 years ago, they had robotic systems that could emulate a human being perfectly. Think about that for a minute. Just, just think about that. You're talking robots that have been field tested in combat that have worked along troops and troops did not know it. Inserted into actual uh, real life situations. And then, of course, pulled. They, they just want to see you know, what the performance was, who could tell the difference between what. Is 15 years later, what do you think they have right now? It's just like AI. People are just now learning about AI. AI has been around since the 70s. Think about that. So there's this public narrative and this public information. People um, seem to weigh our situation. They seem to try and decipher where we're at as far as time goes by what they can see. And that is, that's going to leave people grossly, they're going to underestimate where we actually are. Because what they really have, you know, these, these things that they really have are hidden from the public. Hmm? They're hidden from the, but you don't, you don't see those things. Most people just know about what they put in front of the public. That's all they know about. 
they, they have platforms and systems that are, I remember back in 2000, uh, was it 13, somewhere around there, 2012, 2013, having a discussion with uh, Angela about observation platforms. An observation platform is ours. But let me, let me briefly describe. If you're ever standing somewhere and you see a blur, just a blur out of the corner of your eye over your head, right? That was likely an observation platform. These things are about the size of a 1,000 square foot house, right? They're, they're right there where they're, they're all over the place. But they operate by, they use much more sophisticated ways. Well, I can't say sophisticated, but a different method of movement. It almost makes it seem like it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's magical in its movement. You may see a blur. You know, you may look up and say, I think I saw something out of the corner of my eye. And then it's gone. Observation platforms are just like that. These are autonomous systems that are aware of you. But before you can turn your head around and look, it can leave the airspace. It can hover overhead about, I'll say about 900 to 1,000 feet. I can just sit there and watch people. And people cannot see it. Uh, That was back in 2013. And these things were actively deployed all over the place. Some of these, some of the silly things that you see in the skies, uh, it's actually our stuff, but we do that stuff in the daytime. We don't have to hide it. You can't track one of those anyway. It's moving too fast. So things like that. Now, this is 15 years later, 20 years later. Uh, where do you think we are? From From 2013 to now, where do you think we are? What do you think we really have? We have some astounding things, right? But they're never going to advertise this to the public. They're not going to allow products and services that they have perfected to somehow be on the market. It's not going to happen, though these things are active, you know? So our narrative of what we think about prophecy is greatly hindered by what we have no knowledge of. The, the general populace, they have no knowledge of certain programs and uh, certain breakthroughs and uh, certain ways of, of living life that nobody knows about. They, the, the, the average person does not know that. And because they don't know that, they will never equate that or, or incorporate that into their view of revelation. So it's going to leave people falling short, which means if the average person can say, well, it looks like we have about 10 years before everything breaks out. The truth is, if, if they can say that, they can see that now, then, in fact, it, the breakout is almost immediate, like right now. A lot of people believe that, you know, they have to install the system of the beast and this new system for financial transactions uh, to, to implement the mark of the beast. We have everything in place right now. The world does for the mark of the beast. Hey, everything is set up right now. The infrastructure is set up. The systems are set up. They can do away with cash overnight. They don't need the cash system. They have the, uh, the computer systems can be easily uh, transformed uh, within minutes, right? So the, the um, back end is complete. The system itself is complete. The process of marking or, or implanting people is complete. All of that's complete. The uh, processing centers are complete, right? And it's happening right in front of you. Right in front of you, it's happening. And people have field tested all this technology all by their lonesomes, right? They field tested this. Grocery stores, for example, uh, some have become highly efficient. That same equipment can be used to process uh, people medically and for different, you know, purposes. Their names, information, everything else can run through that financial system. The credit card processing systems, do you guys know this? The same credit card processing systems that are deployed all around the world, right, to keep track of finances through plastic cards, that same system 
is the exact same system utilized in the medical field to mass to, to have some sort of procedure on the masses. The exact same system is going to be used. It's already set up. It's already in place. Everything is already in place. And all they have to do, all anybody has to do, is allow the first system to crumble to implement a new one. They can do this in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Hmm. Now, isn't that something? Somebody said jump rooms. Ooh, boy, I can't, I can't go there. Too early for that. Well, those are real. Oh. Here they are. So we're in a very different type of situation. The problem is that the average person can only see a little piece of it, a small piece of it. That's primarily why most have been incorrect regarding trying to pinpoint what time we actually occupy. They've been absolutely wrong, right? It should make you, how come nobody can, can truly uh, foresee what's ahead of us, right? Uh, and get it right. They, they haven't been able to. Because the average person can only see a smidget of what is. There are too many piece, pieces missing. And with all this cyber stuff happening right now, right, because you have foreign actors who are going to take full advantage of any weakness within the USA, any weakness, um, they will actually coordinate externally outside the USA, become a great enemy of the USA, and hit us where it counts. There are, they also have advancements people don't know about. Iran has advancements people don't know about. You know, one of my biggest cautions is that Iran is going at some point they're going to get us they're going to get us big time and they will be successful and we're going to have some issues right we're going to have some problems we're going to have some issues with that iran is so much more equipped than what people are prepared to handle you have these big powers with these, uh, the USA, for example. Something has happened to the USA where we have become very complacent. We're trusting of our own techniques and everything else. That's just simply not going to bode well with those who have been active all this time, right? who have been uh, hungry all this time. Not going to bode well. As far as this little uh, issue that we're having this morning, right? Uh, they have, they're going to see, oh boy. Wait a minute, let me, let me see something. Uh-oh. Well, it's hitting, it's hit overseas now. The UK had to do a workaround. Australia had to do a few workarounds. Wow. So, you know what? By the information that's coming in, uh, the Middle East was hit with it. The UK was hit with it. Um, Communication systems in the UK were highly affected. Um, Israel, their hospitals were highly affected. In the USA, um, banks and airlines were affected. Um, there are, there have been certain, there have been communications, sporadic communications, dropouts. So it looks like it's hit another system. Keep in mind, everything we do is run from a, uh, we do everything on the cloud these days. So essentially everybody is remote connected to a, to a, um, uh, much more powerful system somewhere else. We've just become way too trusting of technology. So I have, I have a piece of advice. Give this some thought. Right? Give this some thought. The truth is we're highly dependent upon electronics. So I have a little exercise for you guys. I want you guys to take about maybe a half hour, no more, half hour. Unplug yourself from Internet things, your dependency, and then 
attempt to attempt to do this. Attempt to look at your life and what you would need to make it without the use of a computer and can it be done? Without the use of your device, your cell phone, computer, any of that stuff, and can it be done? What, what this will force to happen is you'll start to take note that, hey, I can't log into my accounts without my, uh, you know, without my device. I don't even know how much money I have without my device. And then you'll find out, well, if I had money, I can't go to a store because if their devices are down too, I can't purchase anything. So if, they, if, if, the, if the money system goes down, stores are not going to work either. They're not going to work. Fast food restaurants are not going to work. This won't work. So these things are not going to work. Um, the updates and the link for cars is not going to work anymore. So Tesla can authorize a car. Tesla constantly authorizes their cars. Electronic cars are authorized. So th- this may ha- this happens at different intervals. They can't authorize. If, if communications goes down like that, they can't authorize. And I'm saying all this because we have a very delicate uh, infrastructure regarding the Internet. Right? Now, the military, they're going to have their intranet. They're going to have their services base to base, but we're not going to have those services. Right? So to so that you are prepared for this, to have an understanding of how dependent we truly are on digital communications in our small devices, take a half hour, don't access anything, and attempt to live life as normal. Um, in other words, go through your phases of life. Like, okay, I have to make sure the water's on, the lights are on, this is working, that's working, I have food and stuff, and you'll find quickly that you can't do anything without your device. You can't buy food, go acquire food. You're not going to get gas, go acquire gas. You can't do anything without your digital devices. So if anybody were to take the USA down, if they hit us at the heart of of, of the cyber world here in the USA, we're done for. In fact, in just about all these countries, if if a if a cyber attack took out um, their central core, so to speak, right, where everybody is affected, they will have effectively neutralized the whole country. That's all they need to do. But that's winning a small battle without a fire shot, right, with, with nobody shooting anything. That will send people into a panic. Big time, right? Big time. Expect that to happen. Expect these things to happen. And train yourself. Get yourselves used to the idea that we're not, we're not, you know, impervious to these things. We have vulnerabilities. And and anybody and everybody will exploit, exploit those vulnerabilities given any, you know, opportunity. Um, any opportunity. So, oh boy. Anyway, now this is going to be funny, right? I'm sitting here looking at this. There is a job list or task list. Um, I can't give you the source on it. It's just say that uh, COT has friends and those friends work inside of different places. Anyway, there were Updates that went out last night, or yesterday morning, I'll say. Updates. The companies that applied some of these updates are the very ones that don't work right now. They don't work right now. So, uh, that's not good. Not good. Anyway, this is minimal, though. I'm telling you right now, this is minimal. This is minimal. This is minimal, but it's gonna be, it's gonna happen more and more. What is this? The third time, right? We had that communications outage. We have a declaration made last night by the incoming president, and all of a sudden, you know, a couple of hours ago, three or four hours ago, stuff started happening. Uh, we had sporadic attempts and cyber attacks yesterday, day before. 
these things are getting worse. And what's happening is you have these external countries getting together, uh, attempting to hit America, to hit anybody, this Western alliance, which is America, NATO, and all those folks, um, hit the weak spots. They're probing us is what they're doing. You know what that implies? That implies a big war is going to start. The nature of warfare is different these days. It's very different. But there are telltale signs of the aggression of these external countries. Um, and they, they, they follow these specific steps. People who know about this, they track the steps of these enemy states because they know it's the most probable thing they'll do to engage us. There's no other way to engage us, and so they have to go through certain steps to engage us. Right? A lot of stuff happened last week from the inside of both Europe and the USA, attacking Europe and the USA, but it came from within. Right? Um, so, so what we see is an escalation, and last night, again last night, given the speech that uh, uh, Trump gave, President Trump gave, we, those countries are intimidated. So if you knew, if you knew a brand new warden was coming in, if you knew this for a fact, that a brand new warden was coming in, and if the warden gets in his position, because what did he say last night? Did you guys hear what he said last night? He said, he said, uh, all the American hostages better be released before he takes office. Before the first day, he, they better be released before the first day he takes office, Right? What is that call? What is that call? That's, you know, that's what the people wanted to hear, but I'll tell you something. I remember when I was young, I was watching a show, and somehow these bad guys got this woman. They kind of took the woman. When they got the woman, right, it, they had her for like five, six days. And on the, on the last day, the woman says she was about to get free. And indeed, she cut herself loose in front of the, the, the people out there, right? And she said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and report everybody here, right? She's hollering this right in front. Of, instead of not saying a word, she's telling those people who captured her everything she's going to do. You know what they did? When she did that, they cut off her way out. She had no way out. All she had to do was say nothing. That's it. All she had, because they were going to let her go, you know, if she was minimal to the what they were doing. They were going to let her go, and she was scot-free. But no, that's not what she did. She opened her mouth and told them what she was going to do to bring down, you know, hellfire upon their heads. And when she did that, she, they said, well, now we can't let her go. And they ended up doing away with her. Well, you know, movies do this in general. Because that's the way people think. I, it happens all the time. Before a person can implement their power, they always tell someone, some bad guy, what they're going to do. Well, listen, if you're a bad guy and somebody tells you, well, as soon as I get free, I'm going to call the police. You're not going to let the person go free, right? Now, I know that people wanted to hear last night. They wanted to hear that the American hostages are going to be released. That's what everybody wants to hear. But last night when Trump said, you had better release the American hostages before I take office, you know and I know how they're going to perceive that. So now they're really saying, well, before he takes office, we better make our big move, right? We better make our big move before he takes office. We better strike. America before he takes office. We better do everything we can do before he takes office. You guys see that? Now, the people wanted to hear it, right? But anytime you do that, uh, you got to get ready for the, uh, you, know, you had to get ready for these, these uh, attacks that we're going to have from the enemy. The problem is we don't have a government right now who they're, they're, they're going through a bit of a, some hardships, they may not be able to stand up to some of these uh, threats. They may not be able to. That puts us in a bad line. So it's probably why 
Schwarzkopf, General Schwarzkopf kicked everybody out the Middle East during the Gulf War. Because whatever he told reporters, the reporters were going to tell the people. The enemy was listening also, and it was slowing everything down. It was causing unnecessary opposition. It hindered the mission. When he put them out, the mission was over in about a couple of weeks. To keep them there would have stagnated for years. People want to hear one thing, and they want to hear things. But it's not a good thing to tell people what they want to hear, because you can bring down... Right? Or, or you can certainly speed up the activity of the enemies against yourself by doing so. It, it'd be like if you got pulled over and it was a bad police officer that pulled you over, right? And he did something, you were threatened, and you look him right in the face, right? And he just gives you a ticket, you look him right in the face, you say, well, when I get back home, I'm going to report you. You don't do that, you're on the road by yourself. No protection, you got nobody out there. Why would you say that? Why would you jeopardize yourself by saying that? In the movies, people always say that. In real life, people cannot help but to tell a person what they're going to do. They threaten people and tell a person, well, when I get free, I'm going to turn you in. When I do this, I'm going to do this. And if you do that, what you're doing is provoking your enemy. They're not going to let you go free then. Sure, if people could be quiet about things and do more than speak, things would be different. But we have a, you know, people can't help themselves but to do that very thing. Now, in this case, what happened last night, that small statement last night, is going to speed up the activity of our enemies around the globe just so you know that. So one good way to be about that is expect it. Be prepared for it, right? Be prepared for it and remember something. When it comes to the end times, what people think will take place, you know, it's fine for everybody to have their ideas. But there are too many mechanisms in the end times people cannot see to come up with a some sort of a, a, a perfect picture or to have a accurate conclusion of what will take place. Even the people that can see some of the missing components, that's very difficult to do. So instead of getting in forecast mode of what's going to happen next, learn to see what's happening right now on the ground right before you. Learn to see that. Too many negligent things happen, right? It's kind of like the uh, some of those folks, some of the Secret Service, those uh, DEI hires. They they just they just totally, I mean they just they just right. Myorcus, um, see the the person who was in that woman that was in charge, I, I believe it was in two women on the detail. In my opinion, they, they don't meet the specifications for Secret Service. You cannot be short for Secret Service. You can't because you're effectively a shield for your principal. They were not a shield for that principal. They messed up big time. Right? They have procedures, coverage, aerial coverage that they have to take care of. They didn't do that either. They didn't do any of that. And that is a failure from the beginning. From the beginning. Secret Service is pretty much a living armored vest for the principal, right? Think about that. They're, they're like armor. For whatever principal they're protecting, they're just like armor. And and they did they failed. They failed big time. Right? They they just failed big I, I think the whole system was a, has been a complete failure for about two and a half years. That's my opinion. But uh too many things are happening like that. Too many things. Too many things. That That is an instant fire, though. I mean, that's fired, fired, fired. You're fired because they cannot execute uh, their duties in that capacity. They are the standard bearers of security. Right? They are. They are the standard bearers. 
And so they, you know, that's a firing because they're ineffective in their, in their specific roles. They failed big time. It, that job is not about reacting. That job is just not about reacting. But none of that could have happened. And then to find out you have folks who are short on that detail, right? who, who could not cover the president. No, they, what? Who did that? So this stems back a long time ago to some of these movements that have been within the USA attempting to make everything equal, right? Well, let me share this with you. In football, would you let a four-foot-tall, 90-pound linebacker play on that line? No, you would not. That person would get killed. So you don't do that. So, so when you have the uh, hires that are, that they don't meet, meet the specifications. You're supposed to be of a specific weight, specific height, right? You're supposed to be of a, have a specific background. You just don't pick anybody for that job. So the problem goes back a while. So that means the system is, is greatly compromised. Greatly. And uh, if that's any indication of some of the other important roles of, of security that this nation has, we're in trouble. We really are. We are vulnerable right now. You don't think the enemy knows the standards of Secret Service? They study the Secret Service because sometimes these these people try to get away in. Hmm? You don't think that the, the these enemy countries understand and know exactly uh, what the protocols the Secret Service are and what the standards are? They're probably laughing. To what if they had a, you know, that video was so telling. It was so telling. Then you had a person hiding behind the president. One of the Secret Service agents took cover behind the president. That's why I never, I never covered that subject. That that creates a type of uh, deep irritation with him, right? Because when you when you take up a job like that, you agree to give your life to save another. You have to do your job perfectly every single time. You're not there to dodge bullets. You're there to take a bullet, right? So why would a person cower down behind the president to hide? And it's right there in the photo. This, that's ridiculous. Anyway, it, and, and because that is the standard bearer, right? Um, all the agencies look to the Secret Service. They, they look to them and to their standards for many things. If that's any indication of what the rest of our standards are, we're in trouble, is what I'm saying. We're in trouble. We are in trouble. That means the whole system itself is broken. That's what it means. It is broken. And you don't think the enemy knows what our true status is? It is broken, and they will take full advantage of it. So keep yourselves aware. These are those end times. We're right in the middle of those end times. Things are a bit further along than what the average person knows because they can't see all the components of the end times yet. There are things in operation right now that nobody can talk about because the civilians don't know it. They just don't know it. And if they don't know it, they can't incorporate that into their perspective of what tomorrow holds. So they're going to have an inaccurate picture and an inaccurate sense of time concerning prophecy period when parts cannot be seen. So things are a lot further along than what we think. Right? Have that understanding so that you're not compromised by fear. Should you start to see, you know, certain things happen. Don't let somebody else's conversation give you fear either. Just understand something that all things are not what they appear to be. Right? We've been on top for so long. A lot of people have become laxed in how they do things. I think that's one of the biggest reasons a lot of people, well, I know the enemy uh, does not like this country, especially uh, when we have leadership that will not um, go the route, th this politician route. They don't like leadership that way. Uh, I know for a fact that countries are intimidated by Trump. 
You guys say they are. They're scared of Trump. They are. And so because of that, they're going to try and do what they do before he steps into office. Before he gets into office, I just, they're going to try and, they're going to try something. They have no choice. Once he's in office, it's too late. Too late. But he gave that mandate last night. Uh, that that was a um, that was after that. So I expect many of these international terrorists and international organizations that are against uh, the Western world, I expect them to raise their heads and to almost act immediately against uh, you know just take their best shot. Expect it. And don't be surprised if we have comms issues uh, because we've had sporadic comm issues since 11 p.m. yesterday. So we'll find out. Hopefully, well, I know they'll get everything back up and running, but uh, uh, I personally, 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 see, the, the situation is so sticky now. Just imagine this. We don't know who everybody is working for all these companies, do we? We don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. Suppose a person is loyal to Hamas and they work within Microsoft or they work within Apple or they work within these companies and they purposely start doing the sabotage thing, right? I mean, purposely. Now, how could you find that out? You can't. That would take, that could take months to find that out. Do you know that? That could take years to find that out. Do you know that? So I'll tell you something. Anybody who just comes out, as soon as something happens, oh, well, don't worry about it. You know, we weren't assaulted or attacked or anything. That's very foolish. That's called a calming statement. That's a statement. That's a prepared statement. That, that denial of things, it goes out standardly to keep the populace calm. But I'll say it again. You don't know who's beside you. You don't know who is who. You don't know in these days. You don't know who is who. You really don't know. And I believe we're going to face a whole lot of this in, 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 in the days to come because we don't know who is who. We don't know what a person truly believes, do we? And it's not like uh, ATF and, and, and FBI and all these guys can profile a person because of what they think. They can't move upon a person because of what they look like or what they suspect. They have to go beyond a reasonable doubt. That person has to warrant of that type of activity to be, you know, detained or something like that. They just can't go up and do that. And because of that, you, you have a lot of people who are loyal to Middle Eastern terrorist activities that live right here in the USA. You don't know who they are. You don't know who they are. I'll, I'll tell you something. They're going to come out. You know what they're going to say. They're going to give the standard line. This is not a, this is not a uh, terrorist attack. This is not a cyber attack. This is not from this. They're going to do that instantly. And I'm telling you, they can't do that. Because you don't know who in the USA is loyal to these Middle Eastern factions. In some cases, people have gotten these, um, they have gotten uh, paid to do things months in advance. And they'll tell them, you know, before this date, do so and so. Just tell us when you're going to do it. So they contact the person. And then four months later, the person does something. But it could be something stupid, but they do it. Suppose a person owns a gas station, and they'll say, D to send out your signal, your tanks need to go empty for four days in a row, and we're going to search for it, okay? That will give us an indication that you're with us, and then we'll plan from there. So you have this gas station owner, and all of a sudden he says, well, no gas for four days. Now, to the average person, that looks like nothing. That's nothing. You would not realize that's a coordinated, right? Part of the part of it, the initiation of an attack on whatever country this person's in. You wouldn't even realize that that person is compromised, that that person is loyal to to these, uh, you know, the, these factions of nations that would do harm to other nations. That's how they do things. They alert each other this way. So you just can't come out and say it was not a a a, um, a terrorist attack or a cyber attack because the truth is you don't know. You don't know. They could have given a mandate months ago. They could have given groups two years ago, and they probably said, well, if, if it looks like Donald Trump is going to win, 
you do this and this so that we are alerted and we'll coordinate from there. So sometimes they don't really coordinate by mouth, but they do coordinate by activities. By activities. So when you see something happen, uh, a person could have been uploading. I think a, I, they're going to say a person was uploading software, uploading updates. I'm, I'm telling you guys what they're going to say. They're going to say they were doing updates. And, and while they were doing the updates, it crashed certain systems. That's what they'll say. You watch and see. That's what they'll say. While while people were applying the updates, something happened, and it was a you know simple error. They had to go back and do it again. That's how they do things. That thus the public goes back to sleep. It does. What it should demonstrate. What it really should demonstrate is that these folks that have access to the cloud to, to apply updates to software that runs other, you know, other companies and things like that, that's a vulnerability. And you don't know who it is that has that specific job. You don't know who it is. You don't know who they're going to send out there to update what even the company does not know who that person may be. They may not know. I know of a, um, I know of a group that used to communicate through restaurants and how they would do it was what the person would order, right? They're, they're, whatever they ordered in their menu and so on and so forth would end up being a, a, a message, right? A message of intent. And they would do this all the time. And it took, it took what, four years for people to work that out? For experts to work that out. They couldn't because they didn't speak to each other. They didn't watch TV, do any of those things. They did what they did by ordering food at a restaurant. That's how they communicated. The one thing they did notice was it was always in, on the opposite side of the restaurant, sitting across the street. Um, that's where a lot of people would sit. And every time this one person kept coming in, and every time he would make an order, they noticed the same person would be across the street. That gave the whole thing away. And they found that by accident. That's the only way. They found that out. That's the only way they found that out. That could have been, that could have continued for years. People have sophisticated systems of communication in every country. And we're talking about some very bad actors. So here it is, right? Um, have an understanding that these things will happen. They're going to happen more and more times. We're going to encounter more and more of these outages. But it's a good idea to train yourself. Right, to get yourself conditioned to the reality of things. We are a hated nation. They will attempt to do anything and everything they can to disrupt us so that you don't fall apart. Have an, have, just have an understanding of the reality of all these different elements happening so that you're not moved. Right? Nobody, nobody should really be moved by this activity that's happening. We should be aware of it, yes. Yes. But don't be moved by it. Because it, it will pass. Things will pass. Keep Take note that the, the system of the beast is going to be set up all over the world. That means you're going to have power, right? That means you're going to have electricity. That means you're going to have your internet connection and all this other stuff. You're going to have it. Or the beast can't come forward and do his thing with Mark. Everything is in place for that. But get yourselves ready because this, this, uh, this situation that the USA finds itself in is far-reaching. It affects more than the USA. It affects everybody. And it will cause, uh, of course, we're going to have opposition. Of course, we'll have more attempts. Prepare yourselves for that so that you can still function and not be compromised by way of your faith, for real, so that you can be of help to everybody else and not compromised yourself. That's how you do that. So be aware of these things. I would not be surprised if if all of a sudden after they come out and say, well, you know, it was a, somebody was uploading something and, you know, some technician's fault somewhere, that we have a communications dropout again. You know, like AT&T, and Verizon, who at first, what did they say? What did they say at first? Let me remind you guys. At first, they said what? It is not 
a cyber attack. Didn't they say that? They said it was not a cyber attack. You guys remember when the cell phones went down, right? They said it's not a cyber attack. That's what they said. Then the same thing happened to AT&T, right? It's not a cyber attack. Well, now, then the truth comes out. You guys remember a couple of weeks ago, or is it last week or something like that, I was telling you guys about AT&T, and then two days after that, what they come out on the news saying? AT&T was compromised twice. You remember that? You guys remember that? A couple of days right after we had that conversation about AT&T, about people's information being on the dark web, they came out on mainstream media. And they started talking about it, trying to calm, do damage. They try to do damage control is what they did. Right? But months before that, they, oh, no, it's not a cyber attack. It, that's what they said. It is not a cyber attack. It is, you know, it's not terrorist. It's not cyber attack. What they say it was, they said it was some. They said it was a server issue. That somebody was uh, uploading something server issue. Now we know the whole system was compromised. Now we know that somebody was stealing stuff off their system, right? Now we know. So then, after the fact, you'll learn the truth. But when it's happening, they'll always come out with these standard lines. This is not a cyber attack. This is not terrorism. Make yourselves aware. Please don't go, don't, don't let them put you back to sleep. The people that calm you down the wrong way. That cushion your pillow with lies, saying everything is going to be okay because the Father in heaven said things are not going to be okay. That's what our Father said. In fact, the Father said wars and desolations are determined until the end. In fact, our father told us to pray, didn't he? He did. He told us to pray. He told us to love one another. He told us to take care of one another, didn't he? Hmm? He did. Why would he say that? Because he declared the degradation of the world until he comes. And things have been slowly degrading. They have. We have technology, yes, and all these things, yes. But have you noticed the world is becoming just, just this cesspool? This cesspool of darkness and of cruelty and of all these other things. They openly practice witchcraft. They openly, uh, you know, celebrate the devil. This, this happens openly. I mean, for crying out loud, the USA has a church of Satan in it. Really? So we live in some very different days. It is steadily getting worse. But don't let yourselves be shaken by these things. Come to terms quickly. That eventually, all of it will be hewn down to the ground. That eventually, the Lord will come back. That eventually, a beast is going to rise. That eventually, it will take power of the earth. And people all around you are going to serve the dragon and the beast. Keep in mind, that it was already said that children are going to turn their parents in. That sounds like some Gestapo stuff, doesn't it? That children will turn their parents in. And for what? Likely because they're not loyal to the system they, they live under. That's what it sounds like. Like somehow some, some, something took place where people pledged their loyalty to something, and anybody who doesn't do that, they're going to be persecuted. That's what it sounds like. Hmm? The Bible told us that that in the household, that the young men would be strangers to their fathers and their fathers would have no heart for their sons. The Bible tells us this. It tells us this. It's happening right there before our faces so that we stay rooted and grounded, right? If you know the truth, Right? If you know the truth and come to terms with it quickly, you cannot be shaken. When you're not shaken, you can be of help to everybody else around you. You can truly fulfill what you've been sent here to fulfill. But if you're shaken, you're going to be stopped in your tracks. You're going to alter what the Lord sent you here to do. You're going to begin to operate by fear and cause others to stumble by way of that same fear. And the outcome is not going to be good for those people. But and if you come to terms quickly, then you're not shaken by these things that happen. 
you have an expectation of them. You don't, you don't uh, obsess over them all the time, but you have an expectation of them. You know they're coming. And so that when they come, you're still calm, cool, and collective. I can help everybody else out. You can encourage others, right? You can encourage the, the, the brokenhearted, the young people who are going to be lost and frightened by what they see happening. A lot of people are living an illusion, right? Most of what people do right now is based on entertainment. Isn't that 80% of the industry that people spend most money on entertainment? Yes. So they want to be entertained with stories and songs and things like that. That's the type of people we have become. War is far from entertainment. And it's when it becomes real to people, people are not going to be able to handle it. They're going to think they are initially. But it, when you start feeling the pain and the anguish of your enemy and of your enemy's devices, that changes everything. That changes everything. But you can accept the truth now and begin to allow the Lord to condition you to what you must walk through. And and if you do this thing, you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fearing no evil. But if you live the illusion, if you're celebrating entertainment every single day, if your desires are what the world's desires are, you're going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You're going to die of a heart attack right in the middle of it. That makes sense. I pray that no one is shaken apart by what will unfold today. Don't be, don't, don't fall apart at the seams. Just understand understand that we live we were born in the end times we live in the end times we are a generation as described in the word of god that is seeing a multitude of things you're also having to deal with a multitude of iniquity no one has ever dealt with iniquity on the scale Just take note, right? Take note of that. So every day, step into the realm of truth, not the world of fantasy, and don't don't do that. Expect enemies to rise up against each other. Expect wars to break out. Expect the consequences of war, right? You're not you're not. It's not like you're rooting in them on. That's not what you're doing. But if you have an expectation of them, you will not be shaken when they take place. If you can keep grounded in reality, knowing that humanity is very unstable emotionally, that anything can break out at any moment, you will not be shaken when things happen. But those people who persistently say nothing is going to happen, this stuff is not going to get worse, they're in denial of everything that's happening right now. If you could put yourself back in the year 2012 or 13, and then all of a sudden, you know, um, notice the weather and what was happening in the world to be snapped back into this day you say oh my goodness this world has fallen apart since that day but because you've been alive and you've been watching things develop slowly it's very difficult for you to see it if we had weather like we're having now back then all of us would think that the end was right there around the corner for real if some of the things that are happening in the world right now were happening 20 years ago all of us would believe it's the end. All of us would. Every single last one of us would, right? We would, wouldn't we? Things have been progressively degrading. Moral decay at new levels. Moral decay. And so as these things take place slowly, sometimes it can be very difficult for you to really take note of them. But make no mistake, we have degraded greatly. We really have. We know what lies ahead by way of prophecy. We're not, we're not experts on pinpointing times, but don't fool yourselves. Remain effective. 
for your neighbor, for your families, by stepping in the truth every single day, not living in the fantasy. Can you imagine those people stuck at the airports? They're stuck at the airports, right? They are. People were asking me uh, the other day, should I travel? Because, you know, they're having the convention. Should I? I said, you know, when, when any type gathering that takes place like that, the enemy is going to take advantage of things or things are going to happen that are weird. The enemy will often take advantage like the Olympics. Not, not a smart move. With what's happening in with over there now, that's not a smart move. Not a good place to have that in the first place. People are not going to listen. And then if something 10 times worse than 9-11 takes place, when it takes place, it's going to be too late for people. And yes, I suspect that too, that something 10 times, 20 times worse than 9-11 is going to take place. And people don't, they don't want to hear that right now. So guess what? They're going to continue to do, to go on their little merry way until the problem consumes them. When that happens, it's going to shatter the reality of many. It will incapacitate a person mentally. It's going to be a very grievous time to go through an event like that, but it's coming. And there are no indications of it. Not that you can see. But it will take place. It's going to be unfortunate. But if people would come to terms right now, they wouldn't be surprised by it, and they would be able to operate during it and after it. But if their mind is stuck in this illusionary, this world, right? And they live a life of fantasy, always looking for the party, the good time, the relaxation. People are deceiving themselves. Great. I believe this time around, it will require of us the truth. trial of trials is coming. And the only way to stand through one of those trials is by truth. So don't be shocked if people start bowing out of things left and right because they're frightened of being harmed. Don't be shocked. You'll likely see that too. Anyway, guys, you're now aware. I just want to give you guys a little hint as to what was happening, but most of all, most of all, to encourage you guys to stay rooted when these things take place and when worse things do happen, right? My hope is that you're not moved, that you're rooted and grounded and highly effective during times of great opposition, turmoil, during times of trial, that you're ready to operate in the capacity the Lord called you to, that you're ready to assist, that you will not fall apart yourselves. You'll be part of the solution not part of the breakdown. And the only way to do that is to adopt, accept, and embrace the truth every single day of your life and not live your life in a fantasy, in this wishful thinking type mentality. I continue on. You don't have long now. None of you have long now. You don't have a long time now. You really don't. None of you do. Right? None of you do. So be encouraged. Now, I may come back on after I'm not summoned anymore. After I come back, I may come on for a little bit. It is morning time, by the way, so people are just now waking up. They are. So I may be back. It is Friday, by the way, so who knows? Who knows? I may be back early. Good to see you, 37. Good to see you. Somebody says, is this live or pre-recorded? Oh, you know now. You know now. You know now. This is live. That is funny. 37, that almost made me laugh. I guess I didn't have to tell you it was live. You you find out, you know, once I responded. I guess everybody would find that out. Either that, or it's a pretty good AI interface or something like that, right? No, it's not AI. It's live. 
hey, I'm going to say God bless you guys. And, um, well, I guess all of us will know what unfolds today, what it does unfold, right? But be vigilant today, 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 today. I'll tell you that today because there's been, there's a, there's a small whisper a call to defile this day, this particular day. There's been a call to defile it. So take note of that. Folks, God bless each of you. I'm going to see you guys next time. I might be on a little early today, if you guys don't mind. But I'll let you know via the uh, schedule on the COT uh, homepage. God bless. Keep all of you guys. I'll see you next time. Right here at the Council of Time. (laughs) 